Hello and welcome to Tech Talks, the People and Planet podcast. Today, I'm joined by Piers Cooper from climate tech business, Altruistic. Hi, Piers. How are you doing? Yeah, good, Lee. Um, great to be here. Good. Good. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, so, Piers, you work for Altruistic as an LCA expert. Um, before we get into your specific role, um, give our, our listeners a, a bit of a high level overview about what altruistic is all about, you know, what you're what you're doing in terms of the company mission and the problem that you're solving with that. Awesome. Will do. I guess so from, I guess, a high level overview, the mission of yeah. the company is to transform how high emitting organizations make better data driven decisions. Um, and with that sort of benefit their business and the planet as well. Um, so in terms of cast, customer type, um, so the big focus from our side is sort of on large companies sitting within the food and beverage, logistics, fashion, and energy sectors. The sort of the common theme between all those companies is having rather sort of large complex value chains. Okay. And the sort of key issue there from their side is actually just trying to sort of unpack that and get that data, understand what's going on, and then start actually sort of understanding initially what the environmental impacts are, whether it be sort of greenhouse gas emissions, but actually sort of being able to manage that data and actually sort of to start using that data uh, to make better informed decisions. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I guess an example customer that we sort of work with and have been working for quite a while is Gusto, it's a food okay. delivery service. Um, so with them, I mean, they are serving thousands of customers each week. Um, yeah. And with that, they have their different sort of recipe options or recipe boxes that are coming with that ingredients coming from all over the world. Um, and those recipes are continuously changing. Um, so that information needs to be updated almost at real time. You're sort of talking weekly updates. And yeah, to do yeah. that manually is incredibly challenging. Um, and that's when we sort of come in with the ability to just sort of help um, you, I guess, sort of gather that data and actually sort of use it and understand it at, at, at sort of near real time. Um, so, so as a kind of rule of thumb, then, you know, the, the more complicated and lengthy the supply chain, the potential greater impact on the environment. Yeah, I mean, it, it does depend, obviously, depends on the industry. But, yeah. you know, sort of you would normally sort of say that, yes, the sort of larger, more complex your value chain is, the sort of more players there are, the more activities that are happening, the greater the impact is going to be. But obviously, sure. that also entirely depends on, on the sector that your company falls in. Yeah. So, so, so Gusto, for example, would be conscious about their impact on their environment and need to come to a, a business like yourself to be able to quantify that data um, and give them what so, sort of reports or something like that on, on how that data is, is impacting. Yeah. So I guess what we provide is the initial sort of, I, I guess, an overview of, of, of this sort of emissions profile of their value chain. Yeah. Um, we do also provide some reporting capabilities, but largely the data is used by Gusto in whichever they whichever they feel sort of necessary, whether that be sort of reporting requirements for particular standards um, or sort of internal um, strategy developments, et cetera. So that we provide insight, which allows the company to make the decisions and use the data how they will. And obviously yeah, we're able sure. to sort of, we, we're able to cater as for different customers as to what, 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 what they sort of require or expect um, from our service, so yeah. Got it, got it, okay, cool. Um, so yourself then, so so LCA, that's life cycle assessments. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to bore everyone, um, Lee. But yeah, a sort of high level overview of that. Um, so LCA, it's basically a method to evaluate the environmental impact of a product, process, technology throughout its entire life cycle. Um, so with that, sort of it considers the environmental consequences associated with each stage. So if we use, let's say, mm -hmm. an agricultural example, you'll have the cultivation harvesting of your crops. With that, you'll have all your fertilizer inputs, et cetera, that's going into that. To sort of understand the entire life cycle, you actually have to also sort of uh, account for the production of that fertilizer. So that's also sort of extraction and use of natural gas for the farm. Oh, okay. and so all those initial inputs that you call your sort of upstream, if you want to say sort of cradle um, type activities all include are all included through the sort of entire value chain and all the sort of inputs to create the sort of emissions or sort of environmental impact picture of your value chain and then includes sort of extraction of raw materials um, manufacturing distribution use um, so that's the customer using whatever product may be for its given lifetime and then the final disposal which is either landfill you know, incineration hopefully recycled um, or reused in some way 
um, yeah, so can't see that for for nice. Things, yeah. Nice. So, so uh, you know, how, how do you get into something like this? You know, what what inspired you to work in climate for for starters, and then you know, what sort of what sort of background do you need to do this job? I mean, yeah, great question. Yeah, I, I, it sort of happened all quite naturally. Um, so originally being from South Africa, um, I moved over to the UK about eight years ago now, um, and with that, sort of had an undergrad in pharmacology, um, but I've not yeah. done much not done much with it. So I moved over to the UK. Um, and sort of prior to that, I'd been living in Cape Town, which I don't know if anyone's sort of aware of Cape Town. It's sort of, yes, lovely city, but it's also sort of quite, you know, sort of oh, you're very close to nature and you have full of access to all of this, um, which was lovely. Um, and then moved to London, which was, you know, a fantastic move. But there was a sort of slightly overwhelming sort of impact of, you know, the sort of pace and the amount of, you know, activity and action happening and sort of me sort of thinking initially how, you know, what, what, what are sort of the impact or my, my sort of daily activities, you know, sort of my transport, my sort of use, but then also just seeing the sort of wider, just the sort of sheer volume of the people and yeah. what they're doing. And, and that, so that's when my thinking started. Okay, cool. How, how would you try and understand this? Um, and that sort of drove me or sort of led me to um, me doing my master's at Imperial College in environmental uh-huh. technology. Um, and then with that sort of managed to sort of, I guess, I guess sort of, channel out my route which, which sort of into the sort of LCA component which LCA specifically focuses on the calculations of these you know the associated impact of your any sort of actions or activities um, and then sort of worked for a while with um, Imperial College as a researcher okay. and then sort of made the move to altruistic um, about it or just over a year ago now um, which has been great um, I must say the sort of Focus in academia was fantastic, particularly sort of working with largely sort of small sort of research and development projects. But you do see very, very very high impact. Um, But there was a sort of there was the thinking there that, you know, the true sort of change and sort of needs to be with the big companies that are sort of truly making the sort of larger impacts globally and sort of helping them understand what their problems are and sort of with that, allowing them to make sort of better decisions and with that sort of starting to improve their processes. It's where the sort of true impact I feel personally will be seen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's de- definitely a, a, a sort of um, personal thing as well, I think, isn't it? Working for a business like that. And a lot a lot of our listeners will resonate with that. Um, you know, lots of our listeners are all motivated by working in meaningful work, you know, that, that helps people or the planet. So I think something like that, which isn't a particularly common Job description, I wouldn't have thought, but um, <laughs> certainly something that will resonate. Um, so it seems like a good move so far. Uh, altruistic, doing lots of cool stuff. What exciting developments can you can you share with the business? Um, so I, I, I guess it's, I mean, there's loads on going on at the moment, which is which, which is yeah. great. I mean, obviously some of that I'm not that close to. So I guess the two main developments or sort of future sort of focuses of me personally and sort of I guess my component of the business, which is. I sit within the sustainability um, research team. So our sort of key focus is um, supporting the other sort of squads um, mm. with any sort of questions that may arise, ensuring that our calculations and everything everything else is aligned with certain standards, et cetera. But then also one of our key goals is, is looking at how and where to develop new features of the tool. So sort of doing that fore, foreground or forefront research, which then if we find feasible uh, and, and suitable, that then gets sort of built in and translated into the tool. Um, but so with that, uh, the sort of main focus of mine for the past sort of three months has been developing our, our farm level modeling capabilities. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's basically being able to to get, I don't know, various sort of, sort of crop level emission factors. So emission factor is, for instance, um, the kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of wheat produced. Um, okay. So enhancing that where we have a more of a sort of global or deeper global coverage of these different crop types. Um, and obviously the value there is, is allowing customers, particularly with their sort of wider or larger supply chains where they're sort of sourcing from all over the world to actually start p- painting a sort of clearer picture of where they're sourcing and how different sourcing decisions affects that or affects yeah. their the emissions profiles. Um, then another uh, a sort of big focus is on or enhancing our product footprinting capabilities so that's in short just doing assessments at a sort of product level so okay. 
if you are, I mean, what's a good example? A sort of a, a can of Coca Cola, for example. You're instead of instead of doing their whole a whole sort of value chain so uh, of Coca Cola, you're taking all those emissions and you're allocating them to or the amount to can or the can of Coca Cola, Cola produced. So you're getting a kilograms of CO2 per can. Wow. Um, and that entails obviously all the different aluminium, obviously the sort of actual what all the all the ingredients that go into producing the actual Coca Cola. Um, but it, but it is incredibly challenging. That's huge, isn't it? Because yeah, that, that would absolutely. resonate to the consumer as well, right? So that's yeah, that's the thing. It, it it does. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, focus on that, particularly with carbon labeling and things like that, yeah. and using that to try sort of influence, you know, sort of decision making and purchasing behavior, um, which is quite an interesting sort of piece of work. We sort of, you know, sort of combining environmental science with sort of behavioral science as well yeah that's sort of true most used to sort of influence each other um but obviously i mean for us i mean me personally so my key focus is you know sort of on the sort of high, uh, helping companies that are actually producing these products you know sort of reduce those emissions so by the time the product gets to the final customer you know the, the overall sort of carbon or or, or environmental yeah. profile is lower or is lower or next to zero well, yeah, I mean, so it's not the, actually like sort of for. put them off actually buying the can of Coke because yeah. of everything that's been done to start with to make sure that the carbon's been, you know. Exactly. So you're not put it, putting that burden on the end consumer, you know. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. I wonder how that'll pan out, though, you know. I wonder if we'll see different buying trends because of that sort of thing in the future. Um, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, and it, it kind of it kind of leads on to to my next question, actually. You know, of course, climate change it's it's the biggest problem in the world. I think everyone's pretty much in agreement on that. How do you think the technology, climate technology, will evolve? I guess over time, in in order for us to to better cha- uh, tackle that. Um, and what part do you think the companies can play in helping? Great question. Lee. Yeah, I guess that from a sort of data perspective, as we sort of lead on from that from the previous question of the product footprint. Yeah. I mean, a big focus from our side is, as I sort of said, is sort of making or helping businesses better understand this by better understanding their data and sort of you know providing that as a service. Mm-hmm. And I think what we sort of are striving to get to, and I think loads of our, I mean, sort of companies in the same place that are providing similar digital solutions, is to get to a point where your sustainability data is equivalent to your financial data so of, of the same quality where you are able to make you know purchasing decisions based on your sustainability data so you are you're basically getting what we call procurement grade data where you're saying okay cool I've, i'm purchasing my tomatoes one from this farm in spain um, and another one from this farm in portugal they have different environmental footprints mm. but and with that sort of one looks a lot better and we're going to purchase based on that footprint you know one even even the, the you know the one with the improved or better environmental footprint could have a higher price but you're making that purchasing decision based on that sustainability data you know and i don't think we're quite there yet no you know, it's, currently it's sort of used mainly you know sustainability data is used internally um, for reporting purposes slash making you know, some sort of or developing internal sustainability strategies, etc. But we're not quite at that point where you can actually use this information. It's at that same level where, as you would, okay, cool, I'm going to purchase that tomato because it's cheaper. You know, you're going to say, okay, cool, I'm going to purchase that tomato because it's got a better environmental footprint. Do, 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 does a lot of time or sometimes do, do the two go hand in hand? You know, because if the if the supply chain is perhaps smaller, then perhaps it's going to cost less. Yeah, I mean, the, the, exactly. I, I think that that's when solutions like the, like altruistics and, and and similar are quite, are quite powerful. When you're able to map that out, and you often do find, yes, that you know, particularly when making recommendations, when you sort of identify what we call like a hotspot, or it is sort of let's say you know sort of large or high environmental impact compared to mm-hmm. the rest of the value chain, making an improvement there often leads to some sort of you know economic improvement as well, because there's it, it's just highlighting an inefficiency in your value chain. So they normally there's normally quite a strong correlation between environmental improvement and also with that sort of a decrease in the sort of I don't know value for you to produce a product. And you, there are yeah no no Tony sorry uh, sorry I was just I was just going to say do you ever get any 
um, pushbacks from potential customers by saying, you know, what what return on the investment? You know, if I, if I, I guess it's a sub, is it a subscription model to you guys, like a SaaS model or something like that? Um, yeah. You know, if I sign up to you guys, you know, what's the what's the return on that investment? Perhaps from a financial point of view, perhaps if you're selling it to like a CFO or a financial director or something like that. Um, well, with that, Lee, I mean, not, not really my sort of specific focus in the business, but we have sort of developed some, well, I guess, sort of RI tools specifically focused for these questions, which, yeah. you know, sort of our, our sort of sales engineers have, have sort of developed. Um, and with that, yeah, you, uh, you are able to sort of with, I mean, even sort of internally for, for customers, we find ourselves, you know, needing to build these business cases. For instance, you're working with a large customer, you know, they have a small sustainability team. They need to go say, okay, we need all this data, but they need to build that business case internally to say, okay, what's the value going to be of us actually going and collecting and gathering this information? Mm. And with that, sort of, we develop the tools that are able to sort of aid or, you know, sort of facilitate the building of these business cases, which are essential, you know, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. you have to, particularly when you're working with a large company, when sort of, you know, everything is pretty sort of strict and tight, you need to sort of have that case to budget those resources for that particular yeah, sort of for sure. area. So. Those sort of tools are essential. And, you know, unfortunately, I think what happens quite a bit of the time, you know, sort of sustainability budgets and environmental performance budgets, they sort of really sort of, you know, the last to or sort of push. Yeah, and that's it's a shame, yeah. isn't it? And I wonder if that'll change moving forward, you know, if that will become more of a, uh, a more sort of front and centre budget. Um, time will tell, I guess. Yeah, um, that's the thing. I, I think, yeah, with that, as soon as you can start demonstrating the sort of value that it's actually bringing in, you know, yeah. or, or sort of better doing that. And that, a lot of that, you know, sort of sits with the, sits with the data, really. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and you would kind of think, do you think maybe the, the businesses will be more incentivized, perhaps, at a, you know, at a governmental level, perhaps, um, to, to actually budget more for sustainability? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, obviously... You know. Yeah, yeah. policy and standards obviously going to be a sort of big push. I know the, the you know the EU. Well, I mean, they're sort of looking or or currently sort of looking at sort of bringing out like their product environmental footprint standard. Um, with that, it's it's quite hard to follow. It basically sets out a sort of framework for you to do these assessments for your yeah. products, which is great. Um, they are sort of harmonising some standards, <laughs> um, and also sort of setting up you know sort of pretty sort of as robust way of doing these assessments, but. With that, what they're wanting to do is actually make it any sort of product that's being they already have for for commodities. I think it's seven different commodities with the carbon border jack, adjustment mechanism. But yeah, there's a certain assessment that has to take place. Any product that's imported into the EU needs to have a sort of environmental assessment done. And with that, you know, sort of setting that initial thing where this data is there, it's consistent. The approach is standard across the board, and this sort of environmental data is there, and that's. I guess away in the first step from a policy perspective of ensuring that you know this data is there, this information is there, and with that can be sort of used and and, and built upon. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I work at, with a, with a lot of different businesses and and actually hosted a number of them on this show that are doing their bit to try and um, help the climate crisis. Um, so it's an interesting insight into what you guys are doing there at Altruistic. So thanks so much for joining us. That's all we've got time for, Piers, unfortunately. But um, it's been really interesting. Thank you. Um, no, great to be here, Lee, and thank you for having me, man.